During World War II, the U.S. Army Air Forces saw a need for a small, fast, high-altitude bomber that could attack compact targets more effectively than the existing light, medium, or heavy bombers. The solution was to modify the P-38 Lightning into a high-altitude lead Pathfinder-type bomber called the Droop Snoot. The intent of this video is to review the Droop Snoot's conversion modifications, tactics, typical missions, and other roles. The P-38 was designed as an air-to-air -air fighter. It was heavily armed with four Browning 50 caliber machine guns and a single 20 millimeter auto cannon. The 50 caliber guns were fed by up to 500 rounds, as discussed on this page from a declassified May 1945 tactical planning document. The 20 millimeter cannon held 150 rounds. It could carry 3,200 pounds of bombs, although a typical Droop Snoot Pathfinder and accompanying P-38s usually carried four 500-pound general purpose bombs and two 165-gallon drop tanks. The two bomb racks and sway braces are located here, and the drop tank would be attached to this pylon here. This image shows a P-38 with drop tanks and one bomb station occupied. Given the bomb and fuel tank position, the fuel tanks need to be dropped prior to bomb release. Characteristics of the 165-gallon fuel tanks are shown on this page. It is 10 feet long, 2.5 feet wide, with an empty weight of 106 pounds. With the density of fuel at 6.1 pounds per gallon, the weight of a single fuel tank equates to 1,125 pounds, the size of a 165-gallon tank. Ground crews found ingenious ways to use these tanks for burning off some steam, like building a canoe and adding G1 oxygen bottles as pontoons. The rationale for the Droop Snoops is listed on this page from a 1945 document titled Tactics and Techniques Developed by the United States Tactical Air Command in the European Theater of Operations. A high-altitude fast fighter bomber is needed to bomb small targets that are protected by light intense flak, where the deployment of larger bombers is not practical. The fighter bomber could also be modified to sight the target in blind overcast conditions. The P-38 was modified by stripping out the nose armament and replacing this cavity with a Norden bombsight and bombardier. The Droop Snoop modified plane would act like a pathfinder. When he releases his bombs, the entire formation of P-38s release their bombs by either radio announcement or radio signal automatic bomb release. Additional P-38 modifications and Droop Snoot tactics are described on this page from a 1945 8th Air Force tactical development document. The P-38's nose cavity was stripped of all armaments and replaced with a bombardier, Norton bombsight, and nose cap transparencies. The P-38's nose armament section shaded would need to be removed. The weight of the P-38 guns and ammo equates to 879 pounds as defined on this table from a 1942 P-38 service instructions handbook. This image shows a side profile configuration of a regular P-38 from a 1942 P-38 Flight Operating Instructions Manual. The modified nose structure superimposed with the Norton bombsight and bombardier. This pane is tempered glass, the other transparencies are plexiglass. A lower entry exit hatch, which also serves as a bailout hatch, was added, as was side windows. In this top view, visible features include the ditching hatch, Norton bombsight, and bombardier side window. Crewman standing through the top hatch. His legs are visible through the side compartment's window. The P-38 bombardier's armored seat, oxygen bottles, and seat harness. Bombing control panel, heated closed rheostat, and oxygen gauges. Bomb release in a volometer and side windows backing reads plexiglass. View facing forward, no bombsight installed. Bombardier with Norton bombsight visible. The first Droop Snoop mission occurred on April 10, 1944, dropping 27 tons of bombs on an airfield with good results. Heavy flak is the mission's main threat, not enemy fighters. The P-38s would fly in a loose formation until 30 seconds from bomb release, then tighten up their formation during the bomb release run, and then loosen up their formation after bomb release. A tight formation will yield a smaller bomb strike pattern footprint. A loose formation of P-38s, all with the same bomb and fuel loadout. The non-Droop Snoot P-38s are loaded with ammo also. The Droop Snoot is a formation leader. He sets a speed, altitude, and course. They will need fighter escort during the penetration phase to the target, since the Droop Snoot and the gun arm P-38s will need to retain their bombs until released over the target. Once the fuel tanks and bombs have been released in that order, the normal gun arm P-38s can fend for themselves during the withdrawal back to base. They are responsible for protection of the unarmed Droop Snoot. Droop Snoot at bomb release. Some Droop Snoots were modified as Pathfinder blind bombers. In this case, the P-38s were modified by adding an H-2X radar system in the P-38's nose. 
The P-38's bombardier would sight the target by radar. The AN-APS-15 radar is covered by an opaque plexiglass nose cap fairing, the plane's Mickey radar operator bombardier. The gun arm P-38s would still release their bombs on Pathfinder Q, just like during visual release. This page outlines a typical Droop Snoop mission from a 1945 8th Air Force document titled Flak, Light and Tense Accurate. Sometimes a white band was painted on the Droop Snoot to signify it as the group's Pathfinder leader. On July 25, 1944, 24 P-38s dive-bombed a fuel dump with high explosive bombs to puncture the fuel stores. Then, 25 P-38s, led by a Droop Snoot Pathfinder, bombed the area at high altitude with incendiaries. A group of P-47s followed up by bombing the target after the Droop Snoot attack. A group of P-47s will provide top cover during the attack and likely escort to the target also. After this bombing attack, all groups will strafe a railroad and Rouen targeting German troops crossing the river. The Droop Snoot-led P-38s bombed and strafed with excellent results. Gas and oil storage tanks were burning. The cost of this mission was a P-38 lost and one P-47 damaged. Additional data on Droop Snoots from three crewmen is discussed in this 1993 Crosshairs newsletter. The targets selected were highly defended, usually airfields. 15 P-38s were converted for Droop Snoot work. They were operational until February 1945. Like all bombers operating in Europe, weather affected bombing visibility and accuracy. This pilot indicated that on two missions, bombs hit the ground. One target was a bridge. This crewman indicated they were looking for small, slightly crazy bombardiers to aim the bombs from and for fighters. Bombs were released by Pathfinder radio countdown. The bomb release method was not considered effective. Keeping the P-38s in tight formation at bomb release was a struggle due to the intense flak experienced. Another bombardier was comforted in knowing his plane could not be identified from an armed P-38. Bombs were released at faster speeds and lower altitudes than adopted by B-17s and B-24s. They were also used as part of a coordinated flak battery destruction force, as shown in this image from a 1945 flak neutralization AAF intelligence report. A coordinated force will attack a flak battery site prior to high altitude heavy bomber site flyover. This is an example of a typical fl German flak site. The high caliber flak guns and systems are entrenched in these fortified locations. Droop snoots will start the attack by dropping both flare markers and bombs on the flak positions. The purpose of this attack is to harass the flak gunners. The following groups include chaff dispensing planes, anti-flak bombers attacking the sites with phosphorus or fragmentation bombs, and then the Passover main strike force. Droop snoots also had a role during the Korean War, as described in this 1997 Air Force History Program document titled Technology in the Air Force, a Retrospective Assessment. The Air Force attacked targets with primitive guided bombs like Razon and Azon. These bombs were steered towards the target by the bombardier. Once a B-29 dropped an Azon bomb, they exited the area and the P-38 Droop snoots bombardier manually guided the bomb to the target. There is a future story here the channel needs to put in the video queue. If you've enjoyed this Droop Snoop Deep Dive review, please consider supporting the channel by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.